Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, let's introduce one more uh, solid geometry object. It's called cone. So we'll talk about cones. Um, the lecture is presented on unizor.com website, and uh, that's where I suggest you to watch it from because there are notes on the side of the of the video presentation, and notes basically contain exactly the same thing which I'm talking about. Um, which I think is very uh, beneficial for you if you just read it after you listen to the lecture, just to make sure you're familiarized with all the concepts. Uh, now, this is only an introductory lecture. Uh, we will have some other lectures about cones, its properties, etc. This is just what is the cone. And um, I will use the concept of a conical surface, which has been introduced in the previous lectures. Okay, so how can we define the cone? Um, let's consider you have a plane, this is our plane, and I'm looking at this from a side, and let's consider you have a circle in that plane. Now, I draw it as, as an ellipse or oval, whatever, just because you're looking from a side, and uh, if I would look at the top, from the top I would see the real circle, but I'm looking from the side and that's why it looks elliptical. Now, let's assume that in somewhere outside of this um, uh, plane, let's call it alpha, this is center, this is radius. So outside of the plane there is a point S, which is an apex of the um, conical surface and we actually draw a conical surface using our um, circle as as a directors something like this so every point on a circle is connected with Um, with the point, with the a apex. Something like this. Okay? So this is the conical surface, which is a result of um, connecting every point on the directories with an apex. Now, Obviously, the conical surface has two sides, above the apex and below the apex. And um, when we are constructing the, the cone, we are not interested in anything which is above the apex or below the plane, which is actually a base for our... So we are not interested in anything which is below. So only this part of the conical surface, which is in between the plane and the apex, is considered. And to close it up, we will consider a surface itself, this plane, the base, inside the circle. So we have the surface, which is a part of the conical surface, uh, from the apex to uh, the base plane, and we have part of the base plane, which is inside the cone, which is a circle. So these surfaces form a cone. Well, that's the definition. Nothing more than that. Obviously, this point O is very important. That's the center of a circle uh, at the base, and its radius is important. Now, in most of the cases, we will be considering such a cone when, if you draw a perpendicular from the apex to the plane, to the base plane, it will fall right into the center. In which case, we will call this cone a right, because it's a perpendicular, goes straight to the center, and circular, obviously, because at the base is a circle. So it's a right circular cone. Um, to tell the truth, most likely we will not consider any other cones. I mean, I can assume that you can draw another cone 
where the apex is somewhere here, let's say, and also connect all the points of this circle to, uh, to the apex, which is here, which is actually projecting through a perpendicular onto the plane into some other point, not into the center. But I doubt we will be considering these cones. It's a rare kind of a thing. So most likely we will use these type of cones and we will just call them cones. Although in theory it's a right and conical uh, and circular cones. Um, okay, now what else? Um, another concept is, is an altitude of the cone. Now the altitude is basically this segment which connects the apex with the plane through a perpendicular line. Well, in this case, this is also an apex, uh, uh, an altitude, which, it, which, which connects the apex to, uh, to the plane through a perpendicular. So this is an altitude or height of the cone, just another term. Well, there are no uh, vertices uh, at the base, only the apex, which well can be called the vertex. Uh, but usually I would prefer to call it apex. <coughs> because it's a special kind of a vertex. What else is important? Okay, what's important is that we can actually have another plane uh, which intersects the altitude of this cone and it's parallel to to the plane A. Now, it intersects somewhere here. And let's just cut off the top. What is this? Well, this is a truncated cone. So, if we have a plane which is parallel to the base and it intersects the altitude of the original cone, we will have a truncated cone. It also has an altitude, which is basically, again, a perpendicular, in this case, to both planes. <coughs> uh, from the point of intersection of this common perpendicular with one to another. That's the altitude of this truncated cone. Now, to define truncated cone, obviously, you need both circles defined uh, with their points and radiuses, and uh, uh, the, the, the relative position of the planes can be defined by, by the altitude. So defining uh, a cone, the entire cone, would be just having uh, a center, the radius, and an altitude, which would define the apex. If you want to define the um, truncated cone, you also need an altitude and you need both circles defined uh, with two different radiuses. Um, by the way, that's an interesting observation. If this radius is equal to this radius, we will have a cylinder. So you can consider a cylinder to be a particular case of truncated cone in case when both radiuses of um, of the circles in both bases, top and bottom, are the same. Well, on this note, I think I can just finish this particular introductory um, uh, comments about what is a cone or truncated cone and what's the cone's element. And well, in the future, I will just use all this terminology formulating um, different problems or proving certain theorems. Uh, deriving some formulas, etc. Well, that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck. <laughs>